Hi everybody, it's Tyler here at Vex Rules, checking in with Vex U Team Uno Reverse, coming in, in from the University of Nebraska, Omaha. We got robots Uno and Dose here, to talk more about uh, this incredible set of robots, a phenomenal team to do so. This robots or set of robots are really cool. They're actually flipping the mobile goals on to score onto them. And it's definitely one of the more unique robots that we've seen uh, out here, not just in VexU, but in high stakes in general as well too. So we'll be diving more into that, some of the build philosophy. This is a first year team, so we'll be talking about some of the challenges they have gone into creating something like this. We'll be talking, of course, everything VexU and all the greatness that goes into it. Let's learn more about Moon Rebirth coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Drone Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Sarah, let's start out talking about uh, from your team in general. Talk to me more about some of the design philosophy between these two. This is a, kind of a crazy concept that your team has come up with and some of the integrations and iterations that your team has been working on. So a lot of the time when we are going through this, we want to build a robot and we did a lot of just different design iterations. So first we started off with first robot here and we just wanted to make sure that everything was the same. It was going to be easier for us to build two robots with the amount of time we have than building one, or like building all of the same type of robot than building two different ones. So we all built this robot. And so like our key goals of building is that we want to focus on being different than everyone else. And if I remember when we were talking earlier, your team started building in December, is that correct yeah. for things? So like, how did you make up for maybe some of that uh, lost time for lack of a better term uh, in, in regards to getting everything together so quickly? We, so to start off, we just decided that we were going to build two of the exact same robots to make sure that we, could do all the testing on robot one robot and then go from there to build the other second robot easier. Yeah, totally makes sense on that. Let's pass over to Aaron and talk about this uh, Mogo clamp that you have. I mean, this whole process that you go through is just super cool. So I'd love to hear more about, uh, you know, how it works. And of course, a, a demo would be awesome so we can showcase this. So here we have our clamp. It's a two motor clamp and it first it clamps the goal and then and then it tips all in one motion. And how it works is uh, when this, when the motors spin, the clamp lowers until it hits the goal and it stops and then it can't spin anymore. But since the entire clamp is mounted on the axle and the motors are still spinning, the entire system rotates. Oh, seems like only one of our motors is on right now. And then we've, we've got these two little prongs on here to straighten the goal out after we drop it. And so it, hold the goal more upright because uh, otherwise when we tip the goal back the rings there's a lot of weight and it just stays up in the bot and it gets stuck. Talk to me about uh, from the idea of running this route like how did this idea initially come to light and then from actually designing it like where you're like okay this is actually going to work. So I came up with this design uh, originally back in tipping point. Uh, it never went on a competition robot it was just used in scrimmages. Um, but when we actually built it, we built it way different from when it was back then. Um, we used to have like a, an arm from way up top, clamp it and then, and then tip. But then we realized we could make it a whole lot smaller by flipping the gears around. Let's pass over to Joseph, talk about uh, how this whole game strategy comes together for it. So you're in a match, obviously you're able to tip goals for it. What's maybe some of the advantages you've seen from that? And can you just kind of walk me through some of your general match strategy too? So, before we actually even got to uh, building the robot, we'd been to some high school tournaments so we could see how the game was actually being played and we saw just how important goal possession was, how important the corners were, uh, and how much people were fighting over the mobile goal. So something really special that we can do with this is, I mean, there's no way to try and fight or steal the goal. You can't bump into it and knock it off. You can't try and clamp onto it. Uh, once we have the goal, it is completely ours uh, and teams can't do anything about it. So uh, in addition, the fact that we flip it all over means we can just intake and it just goes straight onto the goal. There's no need for a long lift that goes the length of the robot so we can get uh, rings on faster and play the game sooner. Oh yeah, of course. So have you had any jamming issues or anything like that with these rings coming in? Uh, we've had a lot of uh, problems testing for that, although we've done a lot to uh, limit how much it does. Uh, 
One thing that we do notice sometimes is when we uh, get a sixth ring on the robot, we don't always, sometimes it falls off here when we try and get it off. You, although we almost always consistently get at least five rings on the. So does this robot end up dropping the goals at some point or is this robot specifically meant to just carry it the entire match? Uh, so after we're done carrying it, we can just drop it. Uh, when we're done, drop it in a corner, drop it just anywhere. We can do whatever we want with it. Makes sense. That. And Nathan, uh, the Urdosa robot has uh, a opportunity to score wall stakes as well, too. So uh, talk to me more about uh, what that mech looks like. And uh, from a packaging standpoint, obviously, I think when you're bringing a goal into your robot, you really have to design around what that is, too. So I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah. So the high stakes are, or wall stakes are really important. We've noticed in strategy. So we had to implement some mechanism to include those. And yeah, with like you said, with the rings going through here, it is a challenge to have all this open space where the ring will go on the goal path. So we do have this two bar around where the goal goes that will lift the entire intake. Oh, it's just, I'm still on the controller. Um, and so we do also to make this more convenient, we just uh, have preset heights with a V4 potentiometer to keep track of the lift's location. So you have preset heights for like alliance stake or wall stake to really streamline this process. A lot more to talk about on this robot too. Uh, Lauren, let's talk about uh, from a CAD standpoint on this. Uh, I'd love to just hear more. I love teams that are utilizing CAD, obviously, to design the robots. And I think especially back to teams, really everyone should be doing uh, CAD on the robots. So talk more about uh, what software you're utilizing, how that all comes together, uh, and then also a little bit more on some of the custom manufacturing that we see on these robots too. All right, so starting off, we use Inventor. Um, I found Inventor to be very easy. I've also taken about five years with the CAD classes in Inventor. Um, one of the uh, biggest things when coming to the design of, we want to flip the whole goal and score rings upwards, I was like, okay, well, we're gonna have to start off with CAD. So I put this whole thing in CAD, and then the biggest reason why I did that was because um, we wanted to find any spacing errors, any spacing issues. Um, in the CAD even, we went through about four to five design iterations of just the intake because we found the ring physically wouldn't fit within the space allocation we had. So that was the biggest reason as to why we started catting it. And then from there, it also helped us get an easier bill of materials because you can pull straight from CAD. So that was our uh, biggest reason to go with CAD. And also, it was also to 3D print parts. So when looking at this robot, you'll notice, and on both of them, we have a lot of 3D printed parts. On the V1, we saw that we had to find a way, since we have 15 inches, uh, these arms could not go within um, our extensions going upwards. So we designed specific catted gears that allow us to have structural stability to hold this whole arm up. And this is a lot of weight going up. It's about uh, two and a half pounds. And so we didn't want this uh, axle that's going through to twist. And that's why we designed that. Also, we found on the drivetrain that we could uh, make our life a lot easier by slotting these special gears into the wheels and do weight reduction. And then we found that even further on this one. So in addition to that, we could also print specific uh, tooth gears, so these are 42 tooth compared to uh, 48s on that one, and that allowed us to save weight and also stay at a 600 RPM drivetrain compared to our original 450. For those uh, gears that are obviously a lot of wear and tear on them for that, are you just using PLA or a different uh, printing material? What do you have on these? So uh, we use PLA, but I use a specific set infill and I also use a specific set uh, height per layer. So the average is 0.2 millimeters. On this, I'm actually using a super fine layer count. I use 0.1 millimeters and that allows us to double the amount of filament used and the amount of layers, which reduces that wear and tear. We are using standard PLA, and then we also use uh, typically a 15% infill, which also means we're lighter than Bex gears, but we still have that same structural rigidity. Jeff, I'd love to hear more about uh, being a first year team, right? There's always a lot that has to come together. Plus you started kind of late in the season as well too. What were some of the challenges like organizationally to get your team going here in high stakes? Yeah, so it was a very big challenge to first even get a space in our college. Um, it took us, we were asking for a space all the way at the beginning of the semester, first semester, and it took us until January until we actually got a small space to work in in the college. So working out of the dorm room, being able to build when we could and make 3D parts in the dorm room was really what we spent the first half doing. And then we were able to finally get a space and come up with timelines and organizational strategies once we got the space to build these robot bots out on a shorter timeline than most people got. We had to do a lot of iterations, design, a lot of testing um, in, in a short amount of time to make sure that they were ready for the world competition. And even being able to get here on our first year was a, a challenge in itself. Most of the robot parts are uh, hand-me-downs, borrowed, 
um, donated from various different high schools, other uh, uh, programs that we were associated with coming up. And so to be able to kind of take all of this ball of <laughs> a team and get us to work together and get things done on time and, and to perform as well as we have was really a challenge that I think we managed to overcome this year. Last thing I just want to ask you, what advice do you maybe have for uh, others who are trying to get a Bexu team going, but maybe are in a similar situation to what you've gone through? Yeah, so it can be very hard um, when it seems like everything's against you, but my recommendation is just keep that drive with you. Lore, me, we were really wanting to get this team together because it, it reaches so many people and is so impactful to um, everybody in the community. And so we just never stopped uh, wanting to get it done, you know? We had to wait on emails and thousands of emails and talking to people. And it's really hard to, to get discouraged and to not want to continue, but um, just sticking with it and really continuing to push forward even when it's hard is the biggest thing to me. And that's what kept us alive. I think really just playing Uno Reverse card every time you hear no yes. in terms of success. <laughs> this is Uno Reverse. Uh, congratulations getting here at Bex Rolls. Really cool design and robots. I wish you the best of luck all the way through. Thanks for taking the time. Tell us more about these awesome machines. Good luck. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.